Hello and welcome to English 2311. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this lecture video is just kind of doing an introduction to technical and business communications. What is it? What are we going to be working on in this course? And what are sort of the foundations of technical communication? So let's start with what is technical communication? Um, in this course, we're going to look at how people in the working or business world find, create, and deliver technical information. So this includes everything from proposals to emails to reports, podcasts, computer help files, blogs, wikis, you name it. If it has something to do with business, um, that is technical communication. And there's a couple of goals of technical communication. Um, to analyze a problem, to find and evaluate evidence, and to uh, draw conclusions. The idea in technical communication is here's a problem, let's figure out how to solve it. Now that we figured out how to solve it, how do we communicate that information with others? So the biggest difference between the writing that we're going to be doing in this class and the kinds of writing that you've done in other courses is that technical communication has a different focus on purpose and audience. And we're going to talk about purpose and audience um, a lot this semester. So let's understand purpose. Um, technical communication always has the purpose of solving a problem. Um, people communicate technical information for a couple of reasons, but they're always just trying to solve a problem. So maybe it's informative communication. So this is communication that helps others learn about a subject or carry out a task or even make a decision. And then you have persuasive communication. These are documents that reinforce or change attitudes or maybe even motivate a reader to take action. But they all sort of center around this idea of you have a problem and I think I know how to solve it. And then in addition to purpose, audience is going to be a huge factor in the types of technical documents you create. Um, so the basic question at hand when discussing audience is who is going to be interacting with your material, who's going to be reading it or viewing it or absorbing it. Um, in your previous English classes, your writing assignments were most likely written for your instructor and the purpose of those was sort of to show your instructor, hey, I've mastered this information or this particular skill or I understood this topic. This is a little bit different. Um, in technical communication, your audience is going to include your peers and your supervisors in your company or in another company. And so we are going to practice that this semester. Um, so let's look at this example. So imagine that you're a public health scientist and you work for a federal agency. And you and your colleagues have just completed a study that shows that for most adults, moderate exercise provides as much health benefits as strenuous exercise, which is great news. But now you have to let the world know. You have to communicate this information and you might do it in a variety of ways. Um, maybe your agency is going to produce a journal article for other scientists. Maybe you're going to create a press release to distribute this information to um, popular or online publications. This is where we would see this kind of information pop up and like WebMD or Women's Health Magazine, those sorts of places. Maybe you're going to create an infographic to use in doctor's offices. This is going to be the type of thing where you're sitting in, you know, the little um, doctor's office waiting for the doctor to come in and talk to you and there's all this information on the walls. So something that a patient can briefly glance at and pull several pieces of key information, probably more graphics than text and probably not the entire entire breadth of the knowledge that you found in the study. Or maybe you're going to do an animated blog post for your agency to share on social media. So all of these are sharing roughly the same information, but depending on who they're communicating with and the purpose of that communication, they're all going to be a little bit different. So let's talk about why technical communication skills are important in your career. 
whatever career it is that you are going for. Um, the real reason is, is that studies have shown that the two most important skills look for in an employee are communication skills and a positive attitude. In this class, we are really gonna focus on those marketable skills, the things that you can put on your resume to say, I know how to write effectively, to communicate effectively, and that will help you regardless of what field you're going into. But there are some challenges of producing technical communication. Um, it's not all sunshine and roses. It can be um, difficult, but one of the things that we're gonna do this semester is really break things down into manageable tasks. Um, so it can be challenging to communicate your ideas to your audiences. Um, in theory, we should all just be able to say what we're thinking and everybody would understand us and everything um, would be beautiful. But the truth is that we have some barriers in communication. Sometimes we don't know the right words to use. Sometimes we have um, a difficult time expressing ourselves. But when um, you have sort of a protocol to follow, um, you're able to communicate your information in a way that it is better received. So communication is a higher order skill. It involves a lot of complex factors, but by breaking those complex factors down into manageable tasks, you are able to communicate better. So let's look at some factors that you can focus on to communicate better. <coughs> Excuse me. The first one is audience related factors. Thinking about your audience as you begin technical communication is always where you want to start. So let's ask ourselves some questions. What problem is our audience trying to solve? Do they already have certain attitudes or expectations that you need to be aware of? Does your audience speak the same language as you? Does your audience share the same cultural assumptions as you? And um, does your audience include people with disabilities who might have additional requirements that you need to meet? Think about purpose-related factors. What is it that you want your audience to know or to believe or to do after having read your document? Think about setting-related factors. What's the situation surrounding the problem you're trying to solve? Is there a lot of stake in the situation um, or is this more of a routine issue? I was talking to a friend of mine recently. They were talking about some things that were going on um, at their place of employment and they discussed two problems. One of them was that the billing department had accidentally missed an invoice for more than $100,000. The other problem was that people were stealing other people's lunches out of the work fridge. You know, obviously both problems, but probably not um, at the same level in terms of what's at stake for the company. So think about what is going on here, how serious is this, and how is that gonna affect my communication? <coughs> Excuse me. And then you also want to think about how are you going to be sharing your document? Is it going to be in digital form? Is it going to be in physical form? And does that make a difference? You're also going to think about document related factors. What kind of document you're going to be creating? What is your medium? Are you sending an email? Are you doing a business proposal? Are you creating a website? Um, do you need to use a particular writing style or level of formality? And then also there are process related factors. What process will you use to create a document? You may go to work for a company who says this is exactly how you have to format all of your emails and you have to follow those rules. Or maybe you're going to need to create a process for your document. Um, do you have sufficient time and resources for creating your document? Is the document something that's going to require updating or regular maintenance like a website? Um, so asking yourself those types of questions can help you sort of figure out what you need to create and what is the best type of document to create. 
Um, but regardless of what type of document you create, there will be some characteristics that pop up in most technical documents. First of all, it's always going to address particular readers, and it will be helping those readers solve problems. It's going to reflect the organization's goals and culture. Um, I've worked for a couple of different um, institutions. Um, Dallas College has a very different culture than, say, Texas Wesleyan does, and the materials the documents, the emails, the memos, all of that that I receive reflect that culture. So as an employee, you want to make sure that you are always respecting your organization's goals and culture. You want to think about, is this something that's going to be produced collaboratively? A lot of technical documents are. Um, how is it going to use design to increase readability? Technical documents are different than academic documents, where academic documents might use something like MLA or APA format. Um, the goal of a te technical document is to be readable. You want it to be attractive. It doesn't necessarily have to use a particular font and a particular font size. You just want to make sure that your readers can interact with it and have a positive experience. And part of that um, has to do with questioning whether or not it's going to consist of words or images or both. So like for example, instructions are a technical document. Um, so you know, instructions from IKEA on how to build that bookshelf may consist entirely of images, but um, instructions from another company may consist entirely of words or maybe there'll be a combination of both. There are some things that you want in all of your technical documents though regardless of who your audience is, what your purpose is, and what type of document you're using. These are honesty, clarity, and accuracy, comprehensiveness, you want to make sure that you cover everything that you're covering, Accessibility. This means that everybody who needs to interact with this document can. Usability. Um, the document meets its goal. Whatever information you're trying to convey is conveyed and your reader can use this document. Conciseness. You don't want an extra fluff in there. Um, professional appearance and then also correctness. So here's how you are going to be able to demonstrate um, after this class and during this class to potential employers that you have the skills to be successful um, in workplace communications. You're going to have the ability to perform research, the ability to analyze the information that you find during your research and the ability to speak and write that information down clearly. And like I said earlier, um, communication skills are one of the most important things that people are looking for when they're looking for potential clients or employers when they're trying to figure out who to hire, um, who to give the contract to. So this can really help build those marketable skills. Questions. If you have questions or as you have questions throughout this course, I am available, I am here for you, I am your ally in learning. Um, no question is too big or too small. If I don't know the answer, we can um, figure it out together, but I just kind of wanted to start the introduction to this course with telling you that your questions are not a hindrance, they're always welcome. The purpose of this class is to learn how to develop these skills and how to practice using them. So if you need me, please reach out. Use your classmates as another resource. Um, use the resources that I provide in our class. Um, but your questions are always welcome. Have a great day, guys.